Through Project Front Yard, we have come to believe that by challenging people's assumptions, you can change their actions. This power can be harnessed to build stronger communities. To understand our idea, you first have to understand a little bit about how Project Front Yard started and how it came to be. <laughs> first, who we are. I'm Katherine McCormick. I'm Carly Almavar. We work in the mayor's office in Lafayette, Louisiana. When we launched Project Front Yard one year ago, actually this month, it was our vision to bring attention to the front yard of our community, or the face of our community. We recognized in the rollout that in South Louisiana, we do our backyards really well. Our food and our festivals and our music and those kinds of things that are consistently making those top 10 lists over and over again every year. We recognize that the things that people love the most about our communities is the things that they experience when they come here and they stay a while, not the things that they see upon their first impression. We wanted to take that same power and enthusiasm and excitement that people feel for our backyards and flip it so that they feel the same thing for our front yards. We've been told over and over again the last couple years in our community that people don't care, that people will litter no matter what we say or what we do, that there's no use in doing any kind of community cleanup effort because we'll just let the prisoners pick it up. We've heard that businesses would never invest private dollars in public beautification projects. And even some of our beautification groups in town have told us they feel disheartened and lonely. At the same time that we heard, we listened to those messages, we listened as our community told us something totally different. We had just completed a comprehensive plan where nearly 10% of our action items were about making our community a cleaner, more attractive place. Our boss had been working with business leaders from around the community who said the number one thing they wanted to be involved in was changing the face of how our community looked. And we had a leader in the media who was willing to rally the media together to make the face of our community better. Our boss was willing to put resources to the effort on one condition. He said it couldn't be a cleanup day and it couldn't be a cleanup week. It had to be a cultural change initiative. We had to go from being a community who assumes that it's okay to be dirty to one that acts to keep us clean. It's human nature for all of us to act based on the things we assume. And we do this every day in every decision that we make. We typically trust the system, so it goes something like this. You have something that you want to recycle at your house, you take that piece of paper, you put it in the recycle bin, and you assume eventually that piece of paper makes its way to the recycling plant. The same thing with our trash. We put our trash out on Monday nights, and we assume that on Tuesday mornings, the trash gets picked up. Every day, every action we take is based on our assumptions. So what happens if we start to change the things that we assume? And we learned this year through Project Front Yard that people actually are willing to change their actions. So Project Front Yard tackled four assumptions to make these changes. The first thing that we had to do is we had to challenge how people viewed public space. And this became clear to us very early on when a friend of ours told us a great story. So we're telling him about the ideas that we have and the things that we're going to work on. And he says, I've got to tell you this story. I came home from work one afternoon, and there's a car parked across the street from a house in a wooded, wooded lot. And I just watch him, and he's sitting there eating some fast food. And he finishes eating the fast food and rolls down his window and drops the wrapper. And so this friend of ours is a lot like ours, uh, us, and he was outraged. And so he went across the street, and he knocked on the window, and he said, sir, what are you doing? And the man looked up at him and said, and was really embarrassed and said, I thought this was public space. <laughs> we have that same reaction every time we tell this story, and it, it's a little mind-boggling to us. So this man assumed that because it was public space, he didn't have to take care of it, that maybe the city would clean it up or someone else would pick it up. He also assumed because it was public space, it was okay to litter. We believe that if he was on private property, he wouldn't have had the same actions. And so when we hear this, and we know that there's some people in our community with this assumption, as Project Front Yard, we felt compelled to switch people's assumptions about this. So really, public space belongs to all of us. We are all responsible, and therefore we're all required to act. 
So we pushed this message out in several different ways over the last year, and the good news is we've found that people have started listening. So think about it for a minute. When you take responsibility for what's out there for your environment, when you see that piece of trash on the ground and you pick it up, you take responsibility, we had to send the message that that wasn't you taking the blame for that. It wasn't you taking the liability for putting that out there. We had to really spread the message of being the change you want to see in the world. And we all hear that every day, but Project Front Yard had to do that to be successful. We had to say to people, you have permission to pick up trash. You have permission to lead a group of people to pick up trash. You have permission to clean that dirty stop sign in your neighborhood that you drive by every day that you hate and you complain about. You have permission to pick trash out of the storm drain. You have permission to change your world. And with Project Front Yard, with every encounter, we wanted to send the message that taking responsibility for your environment, for the world around you, did not necessarily mean taking the blame. Our favorite story about empowerment is about a six-year-old that we met earlier this year named Amelie. Amelie wrote our office a letter, and her letter basically went something like this. Dear Mayor Durrell, my name is Amelie. I'm six. I love Project Front Yard. What can a kid do to get involved? Love, Amelie. And in hindsight, when you talk to Amelie and her teachers, they expected something like this in return. Dear Amelie, thank you for loving Project Front Yard. Here's a t-shirt, go clean up your school. Love the mayor. Actually, that's not what happened at all. So we went and sat down with Amelie and we learned about the things that Amelie cared about. And what we heard her say was, I care about the river and I wanna understand how trash gets in the river and I wanna understand who picks it up every day. And then what does it do to our wildlife? And as we taught Amelie some of these things, she felt empowered to let all of the children and their parents in Louisiana understand the same things. And so she looked at us and she said, Ms. Catherine and Ms. Carly, can we make a video to teach people about this? And we were like, absolutely. So within a matter of three days, Amelie had found her own videographer. We had found funding for the project. And a couple weeks later, we made a 20-minute documentary on the health of our waterways that ends with a strong call to action from a six-year-old, encouraging all of us to do our part to keep our waterways clean. It, it's an amazing story, and you know, we believe strongly that at the end of the day, when we look back at Project Front Yard's success, it'll be measured by how many people in our community feel empowered, just like Amelie, and do something that really creates change in our community. So at the same time we were working at the individual level to change people's individual behavior, to feel empowered, to change how they viewed public space, we also knew that we had to work as a community and as a group to change group assumptions and group behaviors. You know, we work in the mayor's office and a phrase that we hear every day is this idea of not in my backyard, NIMBY, right? And we wanted to flip that on its head so we came up with a new term called YOFI, yes, in our front yard. It was all about shifting the mindset and making people care about their environment and what was in their front yard. And that is one of the things that we really needed to do. So we worked and we created, one of the first things we did was we created a, an, an environment where we could use positive peer pressure to change a cultural norm. And Catherine's gonna tell you a little story about that. It's not often that you actually get to pick up litter in front of the same people who were throwing it out. Um, and, and actually, if you've ever picked up litter, it's, it's a, it's a, a life-changing experience. This year during Mardi Gras, we got to do this very thing. So we felt like, and you know, in, in our culture, in our society, Mardi Gras is a time where typically the regular rules of life don't apply in this spirit of celebration, <laughs> right? So on a regular Tuesday, you wouldn't normally see groups of people just throwing their cups on the ground and walking away. But during Mardi Gras, on Fat Tuesday, you see that happening. And so as Project Front Yard, we were wondering how we could make a change in this cultural assumption that we have about our celebrations in our community. So we took a group of about 30 people and we became the last float in a Mardi Gras parade. And by float, I mean we had a truck and a trailer and instead of throwing beads to people, we carried trash bags. And we walked up to people on the side of the roads with a big smile and said, can we have your trash? <laughs> and they looked at us like we were crazy. And they asked us things like, what did you do to get arrested? <laughs> and they said things like, who is making you do this? And when they realized that we were doing this out of the goodness of our hearts because we wanted a cleaner community during Mardi Gras, their assumptions and their actions changed on the spot. 
And you could watch as we walked down this you know, almost four mile stretch of the parade route, people started gathering up their trash and were excited to hand it to us. And then their kids got involved and even people on the floats in front of us started handing us their trash and kind of, and instead of letting it just kind of blow away in the wind. So people were excited. The positive peer pressure was working. People wanted to be a part of a bigger collect, collective effort that was making a difference. The final thing, and arguably the most important assumption that Project Front Yard challenged, was the assumption that no one else cared. So when we launched Project Front Yard, our community was already littered, yes, you see what I did there, with groups who cared about these issues. We had groups interested in public art. We had groups cleaning up the river. We had groups picking up litter. We had groups for all of these things, garden clubs, anything you can think of, roadside pride. The groups were already out there. And Project Front Yard validated the work of these groups, but it, tie it exposed how lonely their work had been. By tying their work together, we were able to challenge the assumption that no one cared to make a difference. Carly's right. Before we launched Project Front Yard, we went out and talked to each of these groups individually. And we asked them questions like, what can we do to help you? Where are your shortcomings? What has not worked in the past? What are your strengths? What have, what's been successful for you guys? And what we heard them say over and over again to us were, they're so passionate about the things that they're doing, and they are making a difference but they feel alone and they don't feel connected. And so when we heard that from every group we talked to, we realized we didn't want to duplicate their efforts because they're all doing awesome work in our community. We wanted to be the umbrella that each of these groups can live under so that all of a sudden the momentum builds. And so a win for the trees group now becomes a win for public art and a win for our litter cleanup group becomes a win for river cleanliness and so on and so forth. So that the momentum builds, people start feeling connected. And we've seen this over the last year, there's been increased enthusiasm in litter pickups and beautification projects and public art projects because people are feeling the power of connectivity. Project Front Yard contrasted the energy and the enthusiasm we have put into our, commu into our community's backyards and it forced us to ask the question and challenge the assumption why we haven't put that same energy into our front yards. We took a step back and we said, we are all a part of how we've gotten here and we all have to be a part of fixing it. And in fact, we're only gonna fix it if we're all a part, of, we're all in this together. We believe that we really spoke to people's core values and reframed the negative and we gave people permission to do two things they already wanted to do. Do the right thing for their community and be a part of a bigger movement. One last story that we really believe speaks to the heart of the mission of Project Front Yard. And we met an educator early this spring who shared with us a story. Every year she takes a group of middle school students to one of our country's most beautiful and well-known national parks for an extended field trip. They stay a week and they do several things during the week, but at the end of the week she sits these kids on a rock overlooking the entire park and she asks them two very important questions. The first one is, who owns this space? The second question is, who is responsible for this space? And she tells us that the discussion that happens with these middle, middle schoolers is exactly the same things that we're seeing in Project Front Yard, that they come to realize we're all responsible, and that if we don't act, there might not be anyone else that will. This educator believes that this is the single most important lesson that her middle schoolers leave school with and carry to adulthood. So whether you're a Mardi Gras goer who's picking up trash on the side of the road, or you're a six-year-old who cares about the health of our rivers, or you're an educator who teaches her students about the importance of public space, we can all be a part of Project Front Yard. And in fact, we encourage each of you to find a way to join the effort. It's been a fun year, and we've seen some progress. We know that we have a long way to go, but we're excited because we also know that we're just getting started.